discovering a new part of Nebraska. This is how you Montana. This is what we came for. What a way to see Cincinnati. And pictures don't do it, Justin. Yeah. The Kate Patters National Seashore. OBX. Thank you, Tennessee. It's fall, y'all. Woohoo! <laughs> you can't get any more Kentucky than that. And that's why we RV. Well, it's already been an eventful evening. Uh, we went to hit live and Facebook said, nope, not going to do it. <laughs> so we hope you all finding us over here on YouTube. This is our season three live preview. We've got some special guests, although we just had one call in sick. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that, but we've got one that's called in sick. So we want to welcome you. I'm Kevin. Hi, I'm Patrice. And we are the host of Are We There Yet TV. We start season three this Saturday at 8.30 on Discovery Channel. We are so excited. We can't stand it. We've been filming since last July. That's August. how long. August? August, yeah. We were in Winnebago in Forest City in July for the Okay, rally. so August is when we shot. And then we kicked things off in August. Um, we're going to be hitting uh, Montana. We've got special guests from Montana, which was actually our first episode that we filmed this season in the Badlands of Montana, Southeastern. I'm just going to check our stream. Keep going. And uh, we have two of the guests coming on, the park manager, Riley Bell from Makoshika State Park, and Donald LaPlante Jr. and his fiance Brittany with Wide Open Lapidary. Um, they were our agate hunters. Yeah. Uh, and then we've, we're kicking off the season in Sevierville, Tennessee, episode number one. Um, we filmed that at the end of October. The colors are gorgeous. Um, so we have a couple, we, we were scheduled to have uh, two special guests. Um, Danielle Parton with Shine Girl <laughs> is not able to join us. She has the flu <laughs> and I told her to stay wherever she was because I don't want it even over the airways. <laughs> and we've got a special clip from Danielle that's not in the show. So we'll be able to share that with you. Uh, she can't be here in person. Uh, and she is, we call her the beautiful badass. She flies C-130 airplanes for the, the Army National Guard. Oh, or the but Air she is National here Guard. in spirit. Get it? Spirit. <laughs> okay, you got a little bit of that for later. Are we doing some shots for later? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, please, when you guys uh, come on tonight, give us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from, whether it's your hometown or whether you're in a campground watching us. Uh, let us know in the comments. We'll be able to put some comments up here. I see we already got a couple comments. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> It's already getting busy. Hey, yeah, not working on my phone. Yeah, I know. It's going to be so great. All right, gotcha. We have um, also our crew. Uh, yeah. Some of our crew will be joining us. I see Bruce is here. Um, we've got probably some of the best crew. Um, they're up for anything. They do everything we do. Um, <laughs> in the first episode, you'll see a zip lining. Um, some pretty crazy zip lines we've never done. We've done tandem mm. zip line in this episode. We were hooked together. Um, when you see us doing something or eating something or the crew gets to do it too. So um, they have a lot of fun as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bruce. Hey, Dan. Smash Mouth. Macho Bruce, our gimbal guy. And then, of course, our redneck fly guy who flies our drones and gets some of the most unbelievable footage. And this season, I think, is some of the best footage, certainly in Nebraska, yeah. uh, is a really nice of sunset. Uh, we've got a lot in store for this season, 13 episodes. We start on Saturday and right on through to the end of June. Then we go on Motor Trend after that, and we replay all the episodes. So if you don't have Discovery Channel, also you can watch us on YouTube. So we, we go online with Roku and YouTube 24 hours after the show airs on Discovery Channel. We'll go ahead and air on YouTube and all that. What's everybody I'm, testing I'm checking. Yeah, I'm checking to see if we can get on. What, will our guests know how to get in? And Facebook? Um, yeah, no, in, I see I, Jessica's right there. She's waiting okay. right there. She's oh, standing awesome. by, so we're good. Awesome. Okay. It's just not working on Facebook. Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. Um, I must have changed the title or something. I made the clip a month ago. Um, so we went to hit go live stream today, and it just said, nope, not going to do it. So we're on YouTube. So if you can tell folks who maybe text me and says, hey, I can't find it on Facebook, send them the link over to YouTube. We're over there. We apologize. Once we get done tonight, we'll post it over to Facebook so people can watch it. 
We it's apologize. It's not our fault. It's Zuckerberg. Yeah. So <laughs> when you see the when you see the credits, McKay Productions, two knuckleheads doing everything. That's, that's us. us. <laughs> that's us. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Sevierville. First episode this Saturday, eight thirty on Discovery Channel. It's eight thirty on the East Coast. It's also eight thirty out on the West Coast. So. In the middle, you got to figure uh, it you out. Gotta, in the <laughs> <laughs> so Sevierville. So we went there and uh, Klingman's Dome. We went and did a great hike up to the top of the Great Smoky Mountains. Um, like we said, Chime Girl. Yeah. But the real exciting part for us was staying at the Ridge Outdoor Resort. Yeah. Uh, whoa, <laughs> when you see the open, well, we have it. We have we, it. Oh, okay. The problem is, I don't know which. Go so here's another thing that just happened just before we came on, literally one no minute. No excuses, McCabe. Let's do I went this. I went to hit the mouse and it exited out of the program and I lost all my stuff. So I don't know which one of those two clips on the end is the right one. Good Lord. <laughs> I see Danielle I see and I him. see Agate hunting, but I don't know. It's got to be that one in the middle. I'm going with this one right here. You want to play it now? Are you ready? Yeah. Here's right. the open to Sevierville. Or the, it's not uh, the open. It's, this is us coming up to the ridge. Okay. So we do our drive in, as you guys know, and then we get to our, uh, our campground. But this one, this is a true reaction to us coming up to the ridge. It's in Sevierville, right around Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg. It's a great place. It's a great spot right outside of all of the stuff, but you feel like you're off the beaten path. Um, I didn't, I'm not the kind that wants to stay right in the middle of all of it. You feel like you're, you're out in this gorgeous oasis. Um, this is a real one take reaction when we come up this hill and see where we're checking into. It is gorgeous. Um, it's meticulous. They've got little tiny houses, glamping tents. Well, you're, you're giving oh, I'm sorry. Clip. Sorry. Giving, we're going to watch the clip. And I'm then so we'll have excited. a special guest afterwards to talk a little bit more about, about it. So let's roll it here. Nope. Day two arrived. And we'll ah. this All right. That's what happens. Go. There we go. All right. We'll go to this. There we go. All right. All right we're breaking. No, this is Sean Girl. What? Oh, gosh. Gonna do some this moonshine. Is shine, okay, moonshine for breakfast, sure. All right. I can't oh, wait. Lord. All right. So as I told you, technical oh. difficulties. Let me go ahead and load it, and I can load it in here. Oh my God. Sorry. Literally, the software crashed two minutes before I got it. it. Is, okay, right the there, ridge the is right here. Okay. All right. We're gonna go to that again. Again, this is a clip from this Saturday's episode. When we pull up to the ridge, this is what happens. Never stayed in a place this fancy. Look at this visitor center. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? Oh my God. Where do you have us staying, Kevin McCabe? <laughs> Or they might. They might be able to hear us. This is it's really easy to get here. We took I-40 out of Knoxville, headed east, took the Sevierville exit. The campground was located right nearby. All the activities. Well, let's go find Jessica. She's going to tell us about the park and where our campsite is. Awesome. The Ridge is an upscale luxury glamping RV resort, which is at the foothills of the Smoky Mountains next to Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. We have 157 RV sites right now. We have tiny homes that will sleep anywhere from two to six people. And then we also have glamping tents that'll sleep up to eight people. Sorry. All right, so that's a little bit about the ridge. We're gonna go ahead and bring in Jessica now, our special guest. There she <laughs> is. Hey, Jessica, how you doing tonight? Hi, I'm great. How are you guys? <laughs> we're a little flustered, but we're all good. It's okay. I'm a little flustered too because I'm on vacation, so the lighting's terrible. I have ten kids here, oh, and I couldn't get you to come on, and I was sweating, <laughs> panicking, like this is not gonna work. This is not gonna work. So. We're here. We're all, we're all flustered together. <laughs> well, everyone, this is Jessica Hale. Um, she is the director of operations uh, for the Ridge Outdoor Resort. Um, she is everything. When we got there, I think um, our crew, they put us in a wonderful spot. I think in one trip, we might have 
tried out four different camp spots um, yeah. in one day because yeah. as soon as we got there, the crew takes a look, and then there's certain things, you know, flying the drone and, and angles. There was a dog that. barking at one of the spots. So she accommodated our every move and put us finally in the spot that you see on the show. Um, gorgeous for sunset, gorgeous view. And then we got to learn all about the ridge from you. So um, it was awesome. <laughs> we loved having you guys. Y'all were so much fun. Well, what's great about the ridge is you, either you have an RV, they got plenty of spots, or you got the tiny houses, or you got the glamping tent. So they really have it covered for any type of traveler. Yeah. Do you have a lot of people that love those glamping tents? So yeah, we have people who, a lot of people who come stay with us, it's a perfect destination. So if people are meeting different places, if you don't have an RV, we have somewhere to put the rest of your family <laughs> that can stay in tiny homes or tents. But yes, the tents um, are for sure a hit. I mean, it's a canvas structure. So you have to realize it's a tent, but people <laughs> love them. So, but yeah, so we have accommodations to fit anyone and anybody who's looking depending on what you're looking for for sure our crew stayed in the glamping tents and it yes. got down to 22 degrees um because we were there at the end of october right over halloween and you had they had heaters in every single room um i was none of them complained about anything we were in there and they were very nice very nice um I, you know i didn't there's heated mattress pads on the on the beds yes. too yeah. so it keeps you warm so it, it's a nice touch yeah i'm still amazed that they have their own deli and they deliver yes so we you can get all the food you need right there on site another part i liked jessica is you guys have a lot of convention or like a stage inside and i know you do stuff on the weekends and then you've also got an outside pavilion too so you guys do big events there as well yeah so we are probably one of the number one parks for rv rallies so our rally season we we do all kinds of events um this this when i get home it starts rally season so i have five rallies that um have the whole park and they do their breakfast lunch dinner entertainment so our event center will seat up to 450 people comfortably in eight foot rounds or up to 700 people in um, just road seating. So we wow. accommodate a lot. And then we do proms and baby showers and family reunions. So we got a lot of space that we can accommodate people. And Halloween. Uh, <laughs> Halloween. The, the, the amount of decorations and uh, so we've never camped over Halloween ever. We will now. And we will now. It's going to be a thing now because the the to the extent that people go all out to decorate their campsite, it's a, it's an experience every campsite and then you guys open up the roads to all the kids. Um, and man, if I were a kid, I would have cleaned up. So our, our spectacular has grown so much that we've had to add it to two weekends because yeah. it's a decor site decorating contest, trick or treating costume contest. It's it's so it's one of our busiest two weekends of the whole year. It's it's outpacing July Fourth or Memorial Day. People love it and they have so much fun the whole time. And you just did something for Easter too. So you do something all the time. You, yes. You, the Ridge is kind of the place to be. Yeah. The Ridge is, the Ridge is constantly, we, the, the Easter Bunny visited the Ridge this year for Easter and landed on different people's side, <laughs> dropping off eggs, leaving his feet print everywhere. So the kids were just in awe. And I, I actually was walking out, um, to give the office and some kids come out and they're like the Easter, but the real Easter bunny has been here. He's been all over the Ridge. I'm like, oh. this totally makes my job what it's meant to be. Yeah. So we love it. Shannon, Shannon, Shannon is at the Ridge right now. Shannon DeSanso <laughs> and Shannon. at the Ridge now, our favorite place to stay. Yep. They come from Ohio yep. at least three times a year. Yep. Shannon has my favorite twins. Oh, okay. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, the twin, the, the her twins can give probably the best tour of the ridge of anybody. <laughs> so we walked around uh, one of the free times that we had, and I saw that you had 
some of the the ones up at the top behind the lodge there they have their own grill they have their yeah. own patio yeah. what what do you call that spot so those are our signature sites and we actually decided when we built those about a year and a half ago um we were just going to try something and see how our guests responded to it and it has literally been a hit so we have four <laughs> rv sites that are signature sites so they have their own tv they have their own fireplace built-in grill and they also have their own personal two hot two person hot tub yeah. Yes. So they have their own hot tub and it's fully, all of our sites are fully stamped concrete pads, water, electric, sewer, cable, ethernet connection at your site. But these sites just take it to the next level and give you a hot tub and your own cooking space and your own TV outside sitting over the, over our pond. We need to get, we need to find out from Jessica when's the best time that, it's a slow season for us to do maybe a get together at the Ridge. Yeah, we would love to come and and we get asked a lot, you know, where we're going to be, when we could all get together from for all sure. over the country. So what's a what's a slower time? <laughs> so you know um, your followers cool. followers would for sure love it. I have some other other groups have have started doing the Ridge as their yearly yep. meeting spot. So your followers would hundred percent love it. So um. April, the beginning of May, sep mid September, and then November is is rally season for us or okay. gathering. That's just kind of those are all seasons. So people, when they're coming to Sevierville Pigeon Forge, they want to gather as a group, but not have hundreds of people, thousands <laughs> of people who are all over the place in as you would in July and October. <laughs> yeah, that Philly Billy, I see. Um, can they accommodate a 40 foot motorhome? Yes. A hundred percent. Where we were, the Sunset Circle, yep. Sunset Circle. Uh, and it you really want that spot too. <laughs> Some pull through. No, there's not a bad yeah. spot there's in the place. There's not a bad spot. Truly. No. <clears throat> I mean, if you um, want sunset, that spot is nice for sunset, but yeah. So Sunset Circle has legit the best sunsets there is yeah. so uh, but all of our sites are the shortest site we have is 68 foot long and they're all fully stamped concrete pads so 100 yeah. percent william we can accommodate you no problem yeah uh, that's good good yeah. to know for all the folks that have those big rvs uh there's no problems they got plenty of space how many spaces again i know we just said it on this how many rv spots so we have 157 rv sites <laughs> and we have 15 acres that we still haven't developed that is coming in 2025. yeah oh, cool. exciting wow. exciting well Fantastic. you're gonna need help <laughs> <laughs> i know i need help now <laughs> well she um um, another thing that Jessica did for us is we needed kids to come trick or treat <laughs> for us uh, because we wanted kids that were okay and comfortable on camera. And so just one phone call and all of a sudden you can hear all the kids coming in their yeah. costumes, just wrangle them over to our site. So. Jessica, Sherry Lindgren's asking a question. She's asking, how far out can you make reservations? So Sherry, we take reservations uh, up to 16 months in advance. So oh. Every day our, our reservation system moves up and we go out 16 months in advance. Those signature yep. sites you were talking about, you need to book those 16 months in advance. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And all the girls at the front desk were so accommodating. Again, like Patrice said, we, we moved to one spot. It wasn't great. We moved to the next spot. There was some noise there. Then they finally got us up to the Sunset Loop. I think I parked in the wrong spot. And when you say not, some noise... <laughs> It's not, it's just no, for, no, the no, no. for the cameras. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, for the cameras. And yes, Kevin, you did park in the wrong spot. Yeah, but yes. it yeah. ended up being perfect because it was the perfect view. So you you I think you might have did that on purpose, but pretended like you didn't. But but I think let's tell people that was a buddy spot though. That was a buddy was. spot. Buddy spot yes, you're right. Is, you're right. Yes, when, when you back in on one side and you pull in on one side, you so just, your door is you open together, your right? Courtyard so, kind of. Yes. Yeah, so we have five different sets of buddy sites so okay. they face so each other awful. so you're in the middle and you have an, an area that you can kind of gather in i love that i i you that's guys why have i was drawn to it yeah you have <laughs> thought of everything <laughs> so what's going on what's that i think what did i see mother's day coming up what's coming up on the calendar yeah so mother's day all of our activities are on our website there's a calendar on there 
So Mother's Day is coming up. We're getting ready to do a princess brunch. So we have a princess brunch every year that Disney princesses come in and you can, it's a brunch for the little girls. Um, obviously, Mother or 4th of July, Memorial Day, we constantly have packed events. We have bingo every Monday night. There's, there's something going on all the time. And we have live music at our pools and all kinds of fun kids games for sure. Oh yeah, they got the infinity pool and then the oh, lazy yeah. river. They have wait till you guys watch the show. You'll get the full 411 on the entire resort. Saturday at 8:30. We're talking to Jessica Hale from the Ridge Outdoor Resort. Probably the nicest campground. It's not a campground, it's an it's, RV resort. It's a resort. vacation resort. Yeah. Uh, you know, you really there's so much to do in <laughs> the surrounding Smokies, Gatlinburg, yeah. Sevierville, Pigeon Forge. I mean, you can go and do all those things, and we did, but honestly, you can just come to the Ridge, and you don't need to go anywhere else, <laughs> and you really don't even have to pack food, because they'll deliver to your RV from the deli. Yes, yeah, so our, our deli, our goal is, I know when I travel with my kids, I want, obviously, to see the surrounding areas, but I also want my kids to be able to enjoy themselves where we're staying at and be able to have fun and different activities. But yes, so our deli is two. If you have ever visited Gatlinburg, Tennessee for the past probably 40 years, the guys who run our deli had two restaurants in Gatlinburg. So everything is homemade, homemade biscuits and gravy, homemade sandwiches, homemade chicken salad. So you can't, go wrong with your breakfast lunch <laughs> from the deli as you're at the pool. Nice. Put it on the list, guys. How do they get make a reservation, Jessica? Let us know. So you can call our office, but our website is the Ridge Outdoor Resort.com. You can book online. You can get all of our information, call in. Um, you can see all the sites that are available. Put your days in that you're wanting to visit. It'll pop up the sites that are available and it's easy as can be. But my staff would also, if you have questions, please give them a call. They are hands down. I'll put my staff against anyone. They are the best there is. Yes, I agree. I agree. They put up with us and and yeah. <laughs> all of our high maintenance moves. <laughs> well, get back to your vacation yeah. and your gaggle of kids there. I'm sure it's going to be a busy day for you. It's it's been a little busy day, but we're we're leaving, going home tomorrow. So we're we're all winded down. Well, thank you for taking your time out with thank us. Thank you for having me and thank you for visiting with us. Oh my gosh, yes. And we're coming back. Um, but watch on time. Saturday morning. It's gonna be a fun one. And uh we were we're happy to be at the ridge. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, all right, Jessica. Jessica. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, we go. This one back. How come I can't go that one? Go full screen. There we go. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Hi, so. Bob Zagami. All right, um, let's get some questions yeah. in here. Hey, Bob, what's going on? We uh, we just did Bob Bob's uh, Consum our campers report. Campers report, and it goes live tomorrow on his website. We just did his podcast um, again. Actually, he's had us on a couple times, and we have lunch with him in between. So um, nice to see you again, Bob. Guys, those who are watching us, let us know where you're watching. I see Vicki Sherritts from Newport Ritchie. Um, let us know where you're watching, whether it's a campground or whether it's your home. Uh, put it in the comments. We'd love to answer your questions. Uh, season two starts or season three starts tomorrow or Saturday at 830 on Discovery. I got a lot going on. Let me tell you. We got a watch party in Tampa tomorrow. If you're in the Tampa Bay area, come out to the Black Sheep American Pub from five to seven tomorrow. And we're doing a watch party. We're going to show a lot more there because it's going to be just, just for that so, night. We don't so, want to give too much away. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a it's such a fun season this season. I uh, just ran into one of my neighbors walking the dog yeah. <laughs> and he asked me where we'd been and when we started filming. Um, so we started filming in August. We started in Montana and um, it's just been a wonderful bumpy ride. I mean, yeah. from Tennessee to Kentucky, we worked with Kentucky State Parks this season. Um, they're celebrating 100 years of state parks. And again, we hit it in October when the colors were on fire. Uh, Kentucky is gorgeous. And we got to do a lot. We went into caves. 
we um, saw a bluegrass band. <laughs> uh, we got to fill our own bottle of bourbon from Augusta Distillery. We're going back to Kentucky, um, to central, west central Kentucky, yep. um, where we're going to visit three more uh, state parks. And uh, gosh, we've been to Cincinnati, the Cincy region. Talk about a cool place. Um, we stayed outside of Cincinnati. We were 25 minutes from the city. We stayed out in Claremont County, um, got to go visit a brewery. We paddled down the Little Miami River mm -hmm. and then went into C Cincinnati for a food tour, um, you know, which was fantastic and tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so sad that uh, Danielle Parton couldn't be with us tonight. Uh, that's our next segment. We can um, still show we, it, can't we? We, we can, but okay. Danielle just called us beforehand. and uh, She's got the flu. It wasn't going to happen. Yeah. It was not going to happen. Uh, we tried. She called us a couple days ago and said she was coming down with the flu, and it's pretty bad. But we've got, we've got her on set in spirit. Well, we'll, we'll have to do a shot we'll for her We'll have to then. do a toast to her. Um, after her segment airs. Um, but yeah, sorry she's not here because she is entertaining. She's super sweet. She's got a lot going on too. Um, they just filmed, um, she might have her own series. Um, so she just filmed there at Shine Girl in Sevierville. Um, when you are in town, go to the Shine Girl distillery and check it out. Um, her moonshine is very, very tasty, very mm -hmm. unique. She says in her piece that she's not going to just replicate the same old moonshine, you know, apple pie moonshine. Everybody's got one. She comes up with some very unique flavors. The one is red. What's it? Red, red velvet, velvet cake. cake. And it tastes red just like velvet cake. cake. backwards here. There we go. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, 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 oh, yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait. Okay, we'll wait. <laughs> um, but. Yeah. I'm excited. It for smells it. just like cake too. That, that coconut one's a little light you got there. Ooh, everybody who was here over the holidays at, at our house <laughs> got to partake of all these good things. That's what I love about RVing is that you can bring home a whole case of this. We had wine that we picked up in Tennessee at Stonehouse Winery, brought home a whole case of that. You can't do that if you're flying. <laughs> um, it was just awesome. It was very cool. I'm going to bump this up so I can see bigger okay, okay there we Who go else? i could see it bruce's sister one of our shoot uh mickey yeah photographers sister nice. is in. uh let's see who else dangling the carrots big time ken that's our job that's you know that's hype <laughs> we got to get you to watch a discovery we got to get those ratings up hi easy dream adventures hi guys that's leanne and frank let's also talk about bob just reminded me too so this season you're going to meet the new main character of the show the Winnebago Adventurer 35F. It's our new RV that we are going to shoot the entire episode season is season with, and really cool stuff. It's got a fireplace, a washer and dryer. It's got an L-shaped couch, bath and a half, bath and a half for this one. She loves it. Yeah. Um, so the Winnebago. Thank you very much. We want to say to Winnebago and all of our partners, Starbright, Startron, have been with us, Patrice and I, for over 25 years. Um, Huge partners of ours. Couldn't do it without them. Oh, so Blue Ox. Yeah, Blue Ox, Campers another one. In. Campers in. Hughes, Magma, what I cook on. Yep. Um, electric bike company. Those are our electric bikes that you'll see this year. Very cool bikes. You get to see a fun segment where you can design your own bikes, too. That's on our Tampa show coming up. Um, and our crew. I, I can't say enough about them. Thank you so much, everybody. We, it's a team that does it all. Um, in-house here to edit and to get everything out on social media and run this live stuff. It's just us two knuckleheads, but we are supported by some wonderful, wonderful people. Bruce. Bruce, Deuce, Dan, Dan, David, and, and David. Deuce. <laughs> and George. And George. So all you guys, thank you so much for what you do. Long hours. Uh, we appreciate it. And the shots, the cinematography is all them. Uh, hi, Jim and Judy from Lutz. Oh, hey. <laughs> hi there. Uh, any questions, anything you guys want to know about the upcoming season, we'd be I happy. See. Easy Dream is in. I'll put them up there from, they're in Louisiana right now. These yeah. folks go 
and go and go. I love to see where you guys are at. Yeah, you guys inspire us too. I just saw that big old bowl of gumbo that yeah. you posted today. It made me hungry. Oh, look who that is. Look who that's on the screen now. Oh, my mom's here. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. A little, let's do a little clip here. Uh, this is a show or a segment that is not on the show. We had this for Danielle, and I was going to say, you're going to pick that one up? Yeah. So this one here was, uh, you see that? That's, um, anybody know what that is? No, and the crew can't say it, because yeah, no, you all know what it yeah, is. Yeah, so some of you might have seen it on another Discovery Channel TV show. Um, but we're going to roll a clip now from Danielle that's going to tell you exactly what this is. We'll be right back. Pecker Club. I had never heard of this before until I was filming the Moonshiners episode with Mark and Digger, and they gave me my very own coon pecker, and it is exactly what you think it is, is a raccoon penis bone. And I was like, dude, what? This is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. And when you're distilling, if you don't have a steady heat, the liquid comes out in spits and spurts, and so you need something to direct the liquid down. And so the way that it's shaped, it will do that, supposedly. I personally could have come up with something a little bit better than a raccoon penis bone. But I got one and it became a funny clip because they're like, put the business end in there. And I'm like, which end is the business end? I have never seen equipment like this before. And so it just, I got so much play off of that. I cracked a joke, created the Coon Pecker Club, proof size doesn't ma matter. And I trademarked it and I sell it on shirts and coffee mugs and whatever. Um, and yes, oh she's gosh. got t-shirts. Kevin has a t-shirt. Um, you can get everything on her website. If you want to try her shine, first of all, I would say go in and see her in Sevierville. She's a hoot. <laughs> Second of all, uh, really tasty shine coconut. Um, and she describes it. She's that, a little missing on that. One. I know. <laughs> like I said, is that our, your favorite? We, we had our family. Um, yeah, it's good. I like both of them together. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Danielle, um, it's the drink called the Danielle is the coconut moonshine with pineapple juice and orange juice. Yeah. So we have that at the end of the show. You'll see that on the wrap up of the show, but mm, really delicious stuff. Really yeah, good stuff. Really good. And she, she again, apologized that she could not be with us. Um, she is under the weather, but if you want to check out the Coon Pecker Club, <laughs> Uh, T-shirts and apparel, and you can even get your own. Uh, I, I, he came home with one. I'm not sure a bookmark. It's or like something. a hook to get. Oh Lord. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can get them on her website, and she ships um, all across the United States. You can try out her shine. Yeah, go to shinegirl.com if you want to order some coconut, some red velvet cake, or it's, I guess the other one's rosé, lavender, and, and rosé. Mm -hmm. Very different flavors, uh, very much a mixing type uh, drink, but they're all so delicious. So you're going to get to see some of that Saturday at 830 on Discovery Channel. The first episode of Are We There Yet from Sevierville, Tennessee. She drives the forklift, too. <laughs> I mean, this girl does it all. She actually is in the Air National Guard. She's a pilot. She flies C-130s. Um, she's still serving our country. Um, and just that's why we call her a beautiful badass, um, because she can do it all. And uh, you just got to try it. You just got to go see her and go to Sevierville, stay at the Ridge and go see her. When we started the show, um, we've always been behind the camera. We had a, a fishing show on TV for 22 years, always behind the camera. You know, Kevin was a producer, editor. I did the sales um, and ran the business side of things. And when COVID hit, you know, they closed down the ramps. Guides didn't want you on their boat. They didn't know how to transmit the virus. Um, you know, it just the world stopped there for a minute. Well, Discovery called and said, what are you doing with your airtime? Well, this guy just calls out, how about an RV show? Um, seeing that people were still traveling in their RVs. And we've been RVers since 2004. Um, we leave the meeting and I said, uh, what show and who's hosting it? Well, three seasons later, here we are. But that was one of the caveats was it has to be authentic to how we travel. Um, this is how we travel. 
I'm, these are the things that we would do. Um, like I said, when Jessica was on, I don't want to stay in the middle of everything. I like being outside. Um, you'll see in Cincinnati, we stayed outside in Claremont County. You feel like you're completely disconnected from the big city, but it's right there. Um, those are the kinds of trips that I like. It's <laughs> a good comment from Easy Dream Adventures. I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the screen because we can have a little discussion oh, about Lord. this. All right. So we're going to have this discussion because when we went to Rock Island, Tennessee, <laughs> and we went to dinner that night, someone said, I wanted pecan, pecan. pie. This one says pecan. And wow. the waitress literally says, Them, is them are fighting words. words. So. If you go through Tennessee and obviously in Louisiana, it's pecan, pecans. Pecan yeah. sounds so <laughs> snotty. It's pecan, but it was also a debate at the dinner table amongst my crew. I apparently am the only one who says pecan. I don't know where I got it from. I grew up in Nebraska. Maybe it's a Nebraska thing. I never knew I was saying it wrong until the waitress said those are fat words. <laughs> Um, yeah. Hi, Lynette from North Carolina. That's my cousin. Hey, how are you? <laughs> You're cooking outside. I know you even like cooking outside the army. Oh, yes. Yes. Hi, um, Ken Rowe. OBX Outer Banks this year, episode number eight, I think. Uh, we go down to Risky Business Seafood at the far end of Cape Hatteras, the peninsula there, the barrier island. Went to Risky Business Seafood and picked up some of the freshest oh. fish Shrimp, I you brought home a lot of stuff. Okay, reason number 754 <laughs> I love RVing is you can bring home that fresh seafood. You can't fly home with it. We got scallops and shrimp. They're known for their shrimp seasoning at Risky Business Seafood Market. It's a tiny little place. Two people in there, they get fresh seafood every day from the local fishermen. They've got oyster farms that they get their oyster from. I try an oyster that is so briny and tastes just like the ocean. It was oh, delicious. delicious. Um, we got, I got massive, big, thick tuna, tuna steaks. steaks. My mouth's watering. <laughs> um, snowy grouper, uh, shrimp, shrimp seasoning. I cooked a feast. Uh, we had a special guest come to camp. His name is Keeper James Charlet. He is dressed in early 1900s, late 1800s um, from the U.S. Life Saving Service. It was actually the precursor to the U.S. Coast Guard. We learned all about the lighthouses. Um, I'm just thinking about that tuna. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the things that we have improved or made a change from last year is we listen to our, our fans and certainly those of you who said it. Um, there will be a lot more on every park we stay at. We've been specifically covering the parks more because you all asked for it. And second change was we wanted to do more camp nights. And Patrice wanted to do that. More cooking. More cooking, uh, more, you know, campfire type stuff. So we've got storytellers um, and something we've got very special for you at the end of this broadcast we're going to send you away with was we even have music. And we did a show in Rock Island, Tennessee, one of my favorite shows. And Patrice in the morning in the, on the RV and the drive-in tells me that she's got a musician coming to camp night. And I thought, okay, I'm excited, you know, a musician. She didn't tell me that it was probably one of my favorite artists. And so at the end of this broadcast, if you guys stick, stick around, around, we're going to play you one. the segment from Rock Island. It's the last segment of the show. And it's Dave Fenley, who was on The Voice, who was on America's Got Talent. His voice is absolutely just yeah. amazing. So stick around for the end of the show. We've got a little tidbit for you. It's in show number five, but you're going to get to watch it tonight because it's one of my very favorite segments because it happens to be one of my favorite artists. Absolutely. So. Ken Rowe, I agree. It should be an hour long. He's saying the show should be an hour long. We we got to get there. We 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 agree because we have so much footage. Can, so, we, so. can we need the ratings? Okay, yeah. so, so what it is is we've got to – Everybody needs to share this post, share the YouTube link, share out the show, tell your friends about the show. The only way we're going to get to go to an hour is with ratings. Yeah, It's the only way. And all of us want to. We, we've actually just shot an episode here in Tampa, and we're slowing the show down a, a little bit, and, and we like it a lot better, but we want it to we be an hour. We can do more. 
You can um, learn a lot more. Bob Zagami, um, he asked if I travel with an extra portable freezer or refrigerator. Actually, no. Um, our, the, we have a full-size refrigerator, basically. Yep. And um, I just know that when I'm going to get stuff, it's really just the two of us. So I'm not hoarding that much coming home. But there's so much storage in our 35F. There was so much storage in last year's Vista. I've never filled everything. Um, it really is. They, they've, they've thought of everything in yeah. storage wise. Um, one of the things that I did love about that Outer Banks episode is I had two different things going from Magma. Magma has this small stainless steel portable, they call it the beach fire and it's a charcoal grill. I put that on the, on the uh, picnic table. And what I loved about that is called beach fire because you can have it on the beach and the wind is not going to blow it out the way that they've created it with the vents. And I grilled some tuna on that, that uh, grilled delicious. some bread. I also had my crossfire burner going. So I had my cast iron skillet going for the grouper. Um, I loved that. I was, I mean, I had it all going that I, night. <laughs> I think we should do an RV camping cooking show. Just, that's just my opinion. Maybe I'll pitch it to discovery. It'll just come out of my head one day and, She'll have herself a special half hour <laughs> cooking show because hey, she cooks unbelievably healthy and delicious. I don't mind a half hour of talking food, cooking <laughs> food, eating food. <laughs> um, oh, you love your K Pasta Tampa Bay. You love oh, your Tampa magma grill. So do I. Tampa Bay. Oh, yeah, look at that. So Tampa oh, Bay. Oh, I think that's um our neighbors. Oh. I think that's Ellen and Maria. Oh, Alan, yeah, let, let everybody know tomorrow night. Friday night, five to seven, really six to seven is the activity. Five to six will be kind of a meet and greet at the Black Sheep American Pub here in Tampa in Lutz. Uh, if you guys come out, we're going to show a segment, an entire segment from the first four episodes. So a lot of stuff we're I sharing with you that. live. Holy Moses. A lot of stuff. Um, real exciting. We're going to start with the Nebraska drive in because that's where Patrice yeah. is from. And the segment, the uh, sunset segment. That we will be showing at tomorrow night's uh, watch really? party. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's gorgeous. If you're in the Tampa Bay area, come for that for a sneak preview. You know, it's a good, we know it's a good segment when we're out there filming it. And the drone operator, while he has yeah. the drone up, goes, That's some of the best footage I've ever shot. I mean, it was absolutely gorgeous where we were this year again in Nebraska. <laughs> We've been so lucky. Nebraska's had us from the southeast to the northeast. We did the north Northwest. Um, we went even further in the Northwest and went to Fort Robinson, Crawford area. It is just uh, sacred land, really. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. The buttes we climbed uh, were 600 feet. We did a sunset hike. Um, it was a short hike, but it was pretty steep. I know I say it in the episode. You're, 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 I know I've been talking too much, <laughs> um, but I'm carrying the backpack and I say it all the time. Um, I like to carry the heavy stuff. Sherry, Sherry says, yes, uh, she would like to, she would watch the camping cooking show. We could just maybe do it online. Maybe. Sure. I'm in. Yeah. I'm down. And Bruce is now hungry because I'm sure he's thinking about that <laughs> snowy grouper from OBX. Well, I just fed them some. I know Bruce had tacos two night two nights in a row, but I made homemade guac. <laughs> we just shot an episode in Tampa this week, uh, our hometown. So we get to show you a little bit behind the scenes of some hidden gems we have. And we didn't go to the the standard you know attractions here in town. We went to small little mom and pop places you might not have heard of off the beaten path. So. Uh, when you watch the show, make sure you got out your bucket list so you could write down all the places that we go to. Uh, some of them you might have been to, but like maybe Shine Girl, you haven't been to. Well, the cool thing that Kevin does too on our website, you can check out our trip maps. Yep. Um, after an episode, he usually uploads uh, just a, a map. Well, it's, it's our production it's, map. Yeah, it's our production. It's what the crew gets before we go on a shoot. And then he, <clears throat> he turns that into, <clears throat> uh -oh. excuse me. One cord will he's struggling. Um, he turns that into a map where you can actually have driving directions to every place that we've been. Charlie Parker asks, Do did you enjoy the sunrises and sunsets on the Outer Banks? Absolutely. Charlie, we stayed at Camp Hatteras. We were on the Pamlico Sound, so we got sunsets literally 
right out back, uh, nothing obscure, uh, nothing, uh, what's the word, nothing in front of us. It was right there. We were there and then the seawall. Yeah, it was the seawall. And then we went, uh, rode our bikes over to the Rodanti Pier and watched the sunset from over there too. So, yeah, we uh, we are still doing our sunrises and our sunsets and still loving them. Well, the sunset in uh, Outer Banks was right out our door. Two steps down, it was right there. The water was right there. We, we had our guest, Keeper James, and I cooked right there as the sun's coming down. Probably one of my most memorable and favorite um, nights from this season, just because of the storytelling, the food, the salt air, and the sunset. Um, it was magical. In the middle of filming his stories, though, Hurricane Ophelia was out in the water and um, the storm, the bands were coming. We got a little shower, had to move it back in, came back out, finished the segment. We actually had to evacuate <laughs> out of there because of Hurricane Ophelia. But you'll never know that when you watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> Ken writes an interesting question. He says, you two highlight the state parks, which are often overlooked for the national parks, which are very overcrowded by comparison to the heart of America. Totally Ken, it's exactly it. We totally started uh, the first season. If you've watched the first season, go to our YouTube channel, search RB There Yet TV. You can watch season one and last season, season two. Um, we started in national parks and the red tape, the uh, public, fly the drone. it was just everything was very, uh, they, they, they didn't were, need the advertising. They didn't. They were very accommodating. We did work with the National Park Service um, and they, they did allow us to do all the things we needed to do except for fly the drone. But we agree with you in that we've always been state park enthusiasts. Uh, they just are less crowded, less trafficked, really unique and hidden gems. And that's what we love. We've got Tony on here. Let's see if we can we can talk a little bit about this one. I know this was one of your favorites. Tony from Smithville, Ah, Smithville, and yes to the cooking show. Hey, Tony <laughs> Luna. Um, did you know Stella got lost I yesterday? did. I saw it. They have a dog that makes air, too. She makes a cameo. Uh, <laughs> sweet little thing. Uh, but they have a, a Smithville in Tennessee, right, about, right near Rock Island, um, Upper Cumberland region, where yep. all the waterfalls are. Yep. Um, Smithville is a dream little town. Every shop is so unique. We get to visit and show you those. Um, Tony and his wife have a boutique, yeah. which is a uh, a, a boutique yeah. that's geared towards men. So beard oil, t-shirts, funny socks, hats. Um, you name it, great popcorn, <laughs> <laughs> candles, that's, you know, manly candles, um, really cool stuff. We also went to Cheryl's Bow Bees. Um, she makes insane cakes and food. Um, yeah, the Smithville's awesome. Uh, Helen Georgia was the best suggestion yet. Yeah, uh, last year we went to. Uh, wow, it's all, we'll talk about that. So. Um, click on click on them so it highlights. Okay, everybody. so Helen, Georgia. This was yeah. uh, last year's first episode was Amicalola Falls, Dawsonville, Georgia, up in the uh, the mountains of North Georgia. Um, funny little story here. We just went. Uh, Patrice's mom, Mary Ann, wanted to go take a vacation, and she didn't want to go super far. And so we said, "Well, why don't you go up to the place that Patrice and I." fell in love with Amicola Falls. And I was going to send her and her girlfriend out to the surrounding areas. They have a lot of wineries around there too. And then into Helen as well. Yep. So we call up to Amicola and there is not a room available, not an RV site, not a cabin for six months. So <laughs> sorry, but the show is working, I guess. Uh, again, if you get but still, to go, you got to go to Amicola. You got to go Park. put Amicola Falls State Park on your bucket list. If you can get up there. Or down there, depending on where you're at. Uh, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Bob Zagami asked if we have taken the new motor home over the sun Sunshine Skyway Bridge yet. Okay. No, not this one. Um, we haven't. We've been over some big bridges like that, especially in uh, Outer Maine. Banks. We did the Penobscot. Outer Banks. Outer Banks. Um, Outer Banks was it's not as big as as tall as the Skyway. But, the Penobscot uh, was. The Penobscot was definitely. Uh, was but definitely. Not, not Sunshine yet. Yeah, we did Oregon Inlet Bridge there, and it was beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, who? Uh, what time is it? It's oh, it's eight o'clock. It's eight o'clock. Okay, so, so we we're have close to our next guest next coming guest on. Riley, it, we it, had to fill for Danielle Party, but guys, 
Thanks for watching. Just to let you know, we're, this is the season three live preview of Are We There Yet? I'm Kevin. This is Patrice. We start Saturday at 8.30 on Discovery Channel. We hope all of you will tune in and help us out get those good ratings. What happens if they don't have cable or don't have Discovery Channel? All right. So if you don't have cable, if you have Discovery Plus, that's another additional uh, streaming network that we're on this year that's different than last. If you don't have cable and you have Discovery Plus, the streaming, you can watch us there as well. Uh, I think it's also on Discovery Go. Yep. It's going to be on Roku the next day. You can go to Roku to search RV There Yet TV. That's how my cousin Lynette watches it. Absolutely. And then it'll be on YouTube 24 hours. Uh, probably Sunday morning we'll release it. I think it's going to be a premiere. You can go over there right now. Go to YouTube, search RV There Yet TV. Go to our page and click the notify me. Notify me. And it'll basically notify you on your phone when that premiere of that show is on Sunday mornings. Pam Morris, thank you. I'm glad you'll be watching. It's a fun season. We go, gosh, we go and explore some of the best little hidden gems around this country. This country is so beautiful. Um, we actually like each other out here in the country, too. You know, I, there, I think it's a T-shirt or a meme where it says, you know, RVers. Um, it's the only lifestyle where you can walk around in your pajamas holding a bag of dog poop and make friends. And it's true. It happens every time. <laughs> every time. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I am notified for all the episodes. Oh, McKinley, thank you. That's Perfectly. great. Perfect. Awesome. That's great. Awesome. And again, any help you guys can give, share the page, our, our Are We There Yet Facebook page, our Instagram, our YouTube. Uh, I think we have a Twitter, but don't bother. Uh, <laughs> most of our audience is on Facebook. And unfortunately, we're not on Facebook tonight because – Something happened where we apologize for not being on Facebook. We hit stream and it said, and I'm sorry you're nope. looking at us instead of Danielle Parton, yeah. who was supposed to have joined us. She's under the weather and, and not able to speak. <laughs> so um, we are, are we having a shot in her honor? I think we'll end the show with a okay. shot. Is that okay with yeah, you? Yeah, that's fine. She makes, everything's backwards on here. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, it's all right. Okay. Yeah, you're all right. Yeah. Um, she makes some of the best moonshine, most unique flavors. This is red velvet cake. Tastes just oh like gosh. cake. That's amazing. Um, and then this is coconut. Um, it, it's delicious. And it's she makes cocktails for us. Whoop. So Whoop. when we filmed that segment in Sevierville, she's in the Sevierville episode, episode number one, starting on Saturday at 830 on Discovery. Um Believe it or not, it was before nine o'clock that we were drinking moonshine. So, uh, yeah, it's a good way to start the day. And just a little word of advice. We don't drink a lot, but on this show, we, we, we're we doing a little more festive drinking, um, more history, history of bourbon yeah. and, and wine and but just know that we're not big drinkers. I, I'm just so you know. No, but I cook with it. <laughs> I don't want people to think. I'm that, an adult. Man. I'm over 21. True, true, <laughs> true. Oh, Rebs. oh next oh, month, Pam's going. Pam. Look, she's going to get some. Yeah. Oh, it's oh so yes. You've got to go in. Um, Check her Facebook page yeah. and her website. She usually posts when she's going to be in there. Um, they do different cocktails and different uh, food trucks and such. Um, she's got a lot going on too. She just filmed, uh, an, uh, a pilot in for her own yep. show. She's going to be on the Hatfields and McCoy's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's been on moonshiners. She's been Digger on moonshiners. Yeah. They've, she's got moonshining in the family. Um, you'll learn a little bit more about her, uh, on that episode for, from Sevierville. We just had Jessica from the Ridge on and, and that was great learning about all the things they've got going on. We might do a meet and greet. Uh, maybe everybody come and camp. Uh, Tennessee would be good, but you can let us know where you think we should all our roads come together. Absolutely. Who's going to Hershey in uh, well, a good September? One. Hershey and uh, the Camp Winnebago or the Winnebago Grand National Rally yep. in July. Yep. We'll be at both That'll of those events. Leanne Hope to meet some of you guys yep. there. Yep. All right. Shall we watch the, I, I don't even know how long this is. I can't is remember that, if it's, this is Makoshka. All right, so let's move on to, we talked about Sevierville, Tennessee. That's Saturday at 8.30 on Discovery. First episode. First episode. Let's move on to the second episode. The second episode is Eastern 
Southeastern, Eastern Montana, Southeastern, Eastern, Eastern Montana. And this is a lot, it's the badlands of Montana, but it's another planet. It really was. When we started having um, the meetings with the uh, Montana folk for this episode, and they, they were giving us a couple areas where we were going to go and they chose Southeastern yeah, Montana okay. in the badlands area. We started doing the research. Um, he chose Makoshika just because he knew we would love it. Um, you honestly feel like you're stepping back into the Jurassic age. There are dinosaurs everywhere. It's on the dinosaur trail. So Montana has a dinosaur trail, a lot of parks that you can go to that have them. This is one of the big ones. They have um, dug up Triceratops there, Hadrosaurus. Um, they had paleontologists there when we were there doing a dig. Um, T-Rex was found in the area. Um, it's just, it's really a cool place. But when we were driving and doing the open of that show, I, I just kept every now and then breaking in between takes going, whoa, we're really here. Yeah. What is this place? It is it's phenomenal. Really cool. It's so wildly beautiful. Yeah. Um, just going back, we had a question about what dates in July okay. for Camp Winnebago. Oh. Um, July 15th to the 18th, we'll be in Forest, Forest City, City, Iowa, camping, probably with our new RV. I don't know. Might be getting, maybe get a new one by then. I don't know. And Can then uh, September if for the Hershey show is September 13th, 14th, 14th, 14th and 15th. Looks so. like Ken Rowe will be there. Yeah. Awesome. But if you guys want to suggest places and times, you know, that's good for everybody, um, we would love for our paths to cross. We'll keep thinking about it when we can camp somewhere um, and get, a bunch of us together, maybe in Nebraska, because it's right in the middle of the country and it's super cool. Russell says next season do a show in Texas around Dallas. Oh yes. How about how Denton? about Denton, Texas? Russell, how about Denton? You tell <laughs> us if Denton's close enough, because we believe it or not, we're talking. Yeah. Oh. What we're headed to the Badlands so and we move back to Wisconsin. Oh, oh you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Gonna easy love dream it. adventures. It's really cool. You're gonna love it. Really cool. Yeah. All right. So I don't know how far this clip goes. I can't even remember what it is. Okay. But it's a clip from episode two, which is gonna be April 13th. It's not this Saturday, it's next Saturday. It's from Glendive, Montana. And let's watch, and we'll be right back after we watch this clip. Docket today, and I couldn't wait to get to the visitor center to meet Riley and learn about this really cool state park. You know me, I'm a big dinosaur fan, so this is gonna be very interesting. And we are on the dinosaur trail. Yes, we are. I wonder if these grasshoppers are descendants of dinosaurs. <laughs> Welcome to Koshika. Thanks for having us, we are excited. Ready to step back into time. Perfect place to be. Let's go. Let's awesome. Makoshka State Park is Montana's largest state park, uh, just shy of 12,000 acres. So a lot of land to cover and it's kind of very unique compared to uh, the rest of Montana. This is the first room of the visitor center here. So it kind of talks about the shallow sea and the early history of Makoshka. So we have ammonites, uh, fossils. We have the Mosasaur dinosaur right above us. And then we also have a replica of the stratigraphy in Makoshka. This is Makoshika. We were just there last at Twin night. Sisters last night for sunset. Oh, that was it? That's all you get to see because the <laughs> next room is the main attraction is in the next room. So it's a little teaser for you. But in the next room is a T-Rex skull and a, tris a Triceratops, Triceratops. Triceratops. Triceratops skull. So um, that they found it was it's the actual skull. If you yeah. have kids. This is a really great place to take them. Um, we, even if you're just a big kid, this <laughs> is a great place to take them. Uh, I have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old great nephews that would lose their minds. And the, we, we're taking notes on places we're going back to. And this is one of them. Um, just super cool. It is boondocking. Uh, right now, it, our first time boondocking uh, for the, yeah. you know, yep. um, it is 
you're boondocking right in the Badlands. Um, going into Glendive too, cute little town. Um, we went into town and ate uh, at a German pub. Well, how about the place we on, on, went to Weibo on the Burger Trail, oh, the yes. Southeast Montana Burger Trail? Yeah. Oh well, yeah, they, they don't. Go. They don't just have a dinosaur trail. They have a burger trail. They just um, said that there. Yeah. Okay. Matter of fact. Oh, we fact, should send that to Frank. To Easy Frank Dream Adventures. You guys are going to win these tonight. Since you have told us you're going to Montana, these are gift cards to Weibo to Bacaros in Weibo, Montana, and it's probably the best. It was voted the best burger on the Montana Burger in, Trail and the Southeast Montana Burger Trail. So we're going to send this. If you guys could send us uh, messages on Facebook with your address, uh, we will put these in the mail to you. You guys win uh, the Vaccaro's gift certificate. If there's anybody else heading to Montana, let me know too, and I'll yeah. send you these. Vaccaro's is a family owned and operated. And when we say family, from the little one all the way up, everybody in the family works there. They also do um, authentic Mexican. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> They've developed the menu and the burger reflects the area. They wanted to do something. Um, there are a lot of cattle ranchers there. So very beef, uh, very beefy. It, it, was, <laughs> it was very good. All right. So we had uh, Donna here says, we saw you going down the highway last year in Florida. We were the couple in the gray truck. That you yeah. held up the sign. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I screamed. I, I wasn't paying attention. I have my headphones on. Oh, and my gosh. I see gosh, Patrice Donna. getting all giddy over there. And, yes, yeah, so the, 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 the true power <laughs> of the show is when if you guys see us on the road, feel free to come up and honk your horn and say hello to us. Um, but Donna oh was next gosh. to us. You I gave us the little heart. You made our whole entire trip home and yeah. then some. I, we just couldn't. That was a long run home. Yeah. We needed that extra little. We did. You, yeah, it was a nice shot in the arm. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're on here. <laughs> where uh, Where are you guys heading? Are you in Indiana? Or are you um, Are you home in Florida? Where are you? <laughs> oh, that's great. That's yeah. good stuff. So let, let to tell you guys, if you're in the Tampa Bay area or the surrounding area, tomorrow night from 5 to 7, from 5 to 6, we're going to do kind of happy hour meet and greet. And from 6 to 7, we're going to show you four segments from the first four episodes. And we've got tons of giveaways. Tons. Lots of stuff to give away. So make sure you guys come out to Tampa tomorrow night, 5 to 7, at Black Sheep American Pub. Yes. Um, Donna's in Indy. Um, we would love okay. to come to Indiana, uh, state or Indiana dunes state oh, yes. park. I know it's a national park. Now we love the state, state park. park side. Yeah. Um, we would love to, and I keep, I'm hounding them because the three dune challenge. I'm currently stalking them because I want to do a show there. It is phenomenal. Yeah. We had a good time there for sure. Nice. For sure. Nice. Um, all right. So are we ready for Riley? No, Riley's not still not here yet. So okay. we're seeing Riley is our special guest, superintendent at Makoshka State Park. Riley Bell. Uh, it was very interesting. Oh, is that him just popped in? That's him right there. there. He's ready. Um, all right, Riley, if you can hear us, we're just talking about you. Um, and was the interesting part about meeting Riley was he was from Iowa and Patrice is from Nebraska. Okay, so how do I know is this was the welcome I get. Um, I walk up and I'm in a Nebraska t-shirt and he's, he says before even saying hello, had I known I'm going to bring him in. I'm bringing him in now. So you can battle it out. <laughs> had I known you were going to wear that, I would have canceled the shoot. He says to me, <laughs> Oh crap. I don't have anything. All right, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> right. Riley Bell from Makoshka state park in Glendive, Montana. Riley, how you doing out there, bud? Good. How are you guys? Good, doing good, man. Good. Doing good. Riley is the recreational manager at Makoshika, and he's got the best <laughs> location job ever. <laughs> yeah. Now, what's the, yeah, what's the weather place. like right now? What's that? What's the weather like right now? Windy. Yeah, it's, oh, okay. Um, 20, okay. 30 mile an hour winds gust up to 40. So I was going to sit on the back patio so you guys have the Badlands formation behind me, but uh, I think the wind would have drowned out my voice. So yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Oh my god! I, I still remember um, one of our favorite times with Riley is he took us up to the top of Makoshka State Park, 
and we did our first stargazing. Eiffel Vista. Uh, at Eiffel Vista. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you guys something about stargazing. If you've never been to a dark sky park, although Makoshka is not as good as Medicine Rocks is, but dark sky, uh, but Makoshka was really, really, I, we were blown away at that night sky with the Milky Way that went across the sky. Riley, is that something you guys do there often up at Makoshka? Yeah, um, we actually just purchased a new telescope just like two weeks ago. Um, luckily, the Montana Parks Foundation was able to help pay for that. Um, so we actually have, I think, six night sky programs scheduled for this summer. So nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Wow, fun. Be wonderful. You do a lot of stuff there at the park. Even when we were there um, in August, you were having like flag football or tag football or zombie, zombie. something. Yep. Yeah. So tell us about all the things that you you do there um, yeah. throughout the year. Oh, yeah. It, it's a busy park for sure. You know, with being Montana's the largest state park, we had to make sure we stay busy. Um, but so, yeah, like during the summer, we have trivia nights every other Wednesday, uh, youth programs every Thursday for seven to 13 year olds. Uh, we do some pop up events with our rangers to do education talks. Um, we have Saturday, we have our paleo experience. Our paleontologist takes people out um, and do about a two hour hike and a tour of the, of the lab in the basement. Uh, we have 3D archery shoots. Uh, we do a music and arts festival in the fall. Oh. Um, I mean, I yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's a busy, busy park for sure in summer. Do they just go to your website and check out and see what you've got going on? Is that how it, people can find out what you've got? Yep, yep. We have our 2024 schedule up on our website right now. And uh, so people can see what we have and come visit us this summer. Yeah. I, I can see us having maybe, say, Dave Fenley doing an acoustic set there at oh, the, at amphitheater. the amphitheater. They have one of the most beautiful amphitheaters at Makoshka State Park. It overlooks the twin sisters this geological formation of toadstools and hoodoos yeah. and and oh. it's the backdrop to an amphitheater i mean it is beautiful gorgeous absolutely beautiful oh yeah yeah that's where we you know we had we rented out for you know weddings people we have quite a few weddings up there at the amphitheater that's where we have our music and arts festival in the fall um we do some pop-up events there as well and it's a wonderful spot to host our events and programs Heck yeah. Tell us about the campground and um, how many spots and, and what people can expect when they do come. Yeah. So right now we have uh, 15 RV sites, um, no hookups. Um, and then we have about 11 tent sites up, up above with the good views. Um, but we actually starting this month, we have engineers coming on board to start our new campground expansion project. So hopefully by summer or spring of uh, 2026, we'll have a new campground with more RV sites with electric hookups, uh, showers, flush toilets, playgrounds, um, all the fun stuff. Oh, that's and, awesome. And, and also, you know, one of the interesting parts when, when we were driving and the drive into Makoshka is as spectacular as any state park we've ever driven in. The access road, once you go by the visitor center, mm -hmm. it's just a wow type wow. of drive You're getting in into in the it. campground. Yeah. But as we're driving in, we see a Frisbee go flying and we're like, what the heck was that? We're, we weren't <laughs> expecting in this this dinosaur type of state park to see a Frisbee go flying. And it turns out that Riley, you guys have one of the top Frisbee golf courses in Montana. I mean, it's beautiful. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys saw the lower course. Um, so it's uh, a mix between recreational and professional. Uh, we host, I think two disc golf tournaments there a year. Um, and we actually just put a new upper uh, new course up top. That's 18 holes professional. Uh, and then we hosted our first tournament last year, last fall, up there. So, wow. uh, and the and these the holes are the yeah. I don't know what you the call cages. Them, the cages baskets. Yeah, baskets, baskets are. It's not easy, and I mean we play here in Florida, and the worst part about it in Florida is it'll go in the water, and I'm not going in there after it. <laughs> but in Montana is it's like you've got the basket up here, or you're down here on these big. You're in the Badlands <laughs> playing amongst these toadstools and things. It's really just an adventure. I don't care if I'm playing or not or how well <laughs> I'm playing. He'll beat me anyway because he's annoying and good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so beautiful. Um, we were blown away. And I've told 
everybody. And we actually showed, uh, Riley, you introduced us to Brenda with the Southeast Montana uh, Tourism. And uh, we talked to her and we got to show her a little sneak peek. I think the same one that you saw. And she was she was emotional when she came back from watching that clip right. because it's nothing other than just capturing it. And it is outstanding. The, the, the natural bridge, the natural bridge, um, the cap rock. I, I, it's yeah. you're speechless. How gorgeous and how old this place is. Right. Um, talk about the dinosaurs that are there. Yeah. Um, so we've, we found 10 different species of dinosaurs so far in the park. Um, we have a great relationship with some paleontologists in Montana and throughout the U S. Um, so we're actually still doing some digs. Um, they actually, they're coming out again this year. Um, uh, the ones that you interviewed last summer. So they'll be out again this year to do more digs. Uh, I can't pronounce all the dinosaurs. That's, you know, but there's 10 different species, you know, there's triceratops, uh, T-Rex, hydrosaurs, uh, there are some other ones I just can't pronounce. And the it. one that's on your plaque <laughs> inside the visitor center that you refuse to say. Yep. Uh, yeah. I call the ostrich. <laughs> Everyone knows what I mean when I say the ostrich, but yeah. So, yeah. Um, and you have downstairs too. Yeah. If, if you go and visit, yep. you can request or ask if somebody's available to take you down into the paleo vault. Yep. Um, and that's where you guys are actually still categorizing and cleaning up and I think that's going to be on the finale. Didn't we talk about did we I think so, yeah. I think, and yeah. the paleontologist. Oh, that, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to have a segment. Dr. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a dog. Yeah, I forget their names. From the Museum of the Rockies. Yep. Yep. From the uh, so that's going to be in the finale. We didn't didn't get to make the show for this season, but the fin or this this time around. But the 13th episode will have that segment in it. So when we were there at Makoshika, uh, Raleigh said after we got done with the visitor center, seeing all the, the, the fun dinosaurs, he said, there's actually paleontologists doing a dig right now. So we actually went and interviewed them. We did not have time on this show to air it. So it's something we'll put in that finale yeah. episode. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's cool. Yeah. It's really cool stuff. Yeah. It's uh, Dr. John Scanella and yeah. uh, Lee Hall with the That's music well, yeah. out of Bozeman, Montana. So yeah. yeah. I mean, the curator of the, I mean, I was like, wow, this guy, I mean, this guy has seen some bones and stuff in this country. And it's really fascinating to talk to those folks. The way that they described it too, of the different layers and what it would have looked like when when the dinosaurs were there, as opposed to what we were standing on. You know, it's the bad line, badlands, a lot of erosion, a lot of things. Um, back when the dinosaurs were walking, it would have looked more like Florida. Yep. It would have been like a swamp. And um, the way that they painted the picture, and when we were walking down. Um, and you all will see it in the episode. We're walking down this hike to go to the natural bridge. We actually are below this, this black line in the side of the rock. And you'll coal see it. Scene. And I call it a coal scene. And that's basically where the dinosaurs, dinosaurs. were crushed. Yeah. Am I yeah. right? Yeah. So it's the KPG, uh, KPG boundary line. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's just the evidence of where the meteor right hit uh, down in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of uh, Mexico. Uh, and that's what caused the dinosaur extinction uh, back in, you know, 66, 67 million, whatever it was, millions of years ago. Millions yeah. of years ago, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it is just, it's an amazing, uh, the second episode is going to air April 13th, 8.30 on Saturday, two weeks from now on Discovery Channel, Glendive, Montana. And you'll see Riley. You'll get to see Riley. And I tell you, this the sound of this show. Get the kids. If they love dinosaurs, it is, it's really We've taken the soundtrack from Jurassic Park as we drive in, and it's just a really cool production out in Montana. Yeah, and we we leave uh, Makoshika a couple times during the episode. Like Kevin said, we went into Weibo, Weibo Montana. Um, they have the dinosaur trail that goes through Makoshika. Yep. They have the burger trail that's in the southeast of Montana. Um, we went to one of the places in Weibo, cute little town, cattle country. Yep. Um, and we went to Vaccaro's, um, which has the um, Vaccaro burger. It's got homemade guacamole, oh, roasted peppers, uh, onion ring, uh, really tasty big old burger. Wait to see Patrice take I, a bite. It's, it's fine. the funniest thing you'll ever you see. To, you have to like unhinge a little <laughs> bit to get that thing in there. <laughs> it's huge. It's delicious. So, Riley, if people want to find out about Makoshka, they go online. Is what's the website? 
Yep. Um, so it's uh, mtstateparks.gov, and that'll okay. have all Montana state parks, and then they'd be able to find Makushka uh, towards the top of the list. You know, since we are Montana's largest, they put us towards the top. So, and, and, yeah. and a little funny story about oh, Makushka. I, 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 I have to tell you because. <laughs> As we were planning the show, we were talking to the M the, the meet or to travel visit yeah. MT, and we were calling it Mako Shika. Makashika. Makashika. And she's talking, and I see everybody's face on the Zoom call kind of go, and I go, and I give her the nudge like I'm like, am I, I not saying, saying that right? <laughs> so it's Makoshika. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, everyone everyone usually pronounces it wrong so yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, um does makoshika mean bad earth bad earth in lakota yep so lakota sioux it translates to uh bad lands or spirits of bad lands yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's a very it's spiritual a magical place. place um magical night with you up at eiffel vista yeah. um we have never done anything like that yeah. it truly was um, still, again, each episode, something, something, you know, sticks. And that night really stuck with me because I, the Milky Way, the, the satellites that we saw, we even saw um, several Starlink. Starlink go by. It looked like Santa's sleigh. <laughs> um, it just, it was magical. Yeah. yeah it was. Thank you so yeah. much uh -huh. for having yeah, Thank you guys for coming and you know. Yeah, so we're talking to Riley Bell, the superintendent, the recreational director, the ranger, whatever you call him. He's the man. man that runs the show out at Makoshka State Park. Make sure when you go by and you see the show, you make sure you tell him we said hello. <laughs> yeah, go into the visitor center. They've got great displays. Um, you'll see some of our video up there someday, too. We'll, oh, that's we'll right. Yeah. Some of our video, right? Yeah, we need to talk about that, too. Now, <laughs> once the show airs, we can talk about updating your little yep. visitor center video. We actually just finished up the script uh, to Monday. So okay. fantastic. working on that. So I'll be reaching out to you for help on. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Perfect. We meant it. Yeah. We can have it. Good. Yeah. Make sure to go in there and get some Frisbees and go play some Frisbee golf. Oh, that's fun. oh another thing you're going to see, Riley, is that Montana Offaly game. It makes it in the end, of the end of the episode. Nice. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right, Riley, thank you so much for being with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Anything else going on? Anything else you want to share before we say goodbye? No, I mean, we're busy parks. So always come out and see what we have. You know, stuff is always changing. Uh, we, you know, with the this last go around, we got some extra funding for some projects. So we got some some new projects coming up. I won't reveal yet, but, you know, there's always new and exciting things here at Makoshiga. So make sure to come out. Come on out and come often. We're coming. We're coming back again. Absolutely. We're coming. Right. Abel will come when there's a football game on or something. I don't know. Yeah. You know, maybe nope. Iowa versus Nebraska. Nope, right. so, <laughs> so we know who comes out on top. <laughs> yeah. I, I will women's basketball at the final four right now tomorrow. Yeah. I know. Seriously. Yeah. Big we're, Ten. We're, I'm so happy it's Big Ten. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> but thank you guys for everything, you know, all your help and coming out and visiting Makushka and you know, spreading our, our message in the park. So thanks for having us. We, we loved it. Thank you so much. Take care, bud. All right. Bye, Take Riley. care. Bye-bye. All right. I didn't know how to do this. Okay. Yeah. So Sorry. that Montana episode okay. with Riley from Makoshika, Southeast Montana, that'll be airing on April 13th. It's episode number two. This Saturday, April 6th is from Sevierville, Tennessee. That's 830 Saturday morning on Discovery Channel. And then we just got done with Riley Bell. He's the recreation manager at Makoshika. He's the ranger, but it's some they, new name they give him. I'm sorry. I titled him Ranger Riley because he <laughs> is the man that runs he's, it. He's Superintendent. The man. They call him Rick. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So Dave asked, will the red velvet moonshine make it to the meet and greet tomorrow asking for a friend? Um, Just you yes. can come meet us out. Side. Yes. <laughs> yes. There will be black velvet, I'm sorry, red velvet cake and coconut moonshine uh, for those who come and you got to make, we got to make okay, a secret let's, word. Let, let's have a secret word. Danielle uh, Park. No. Uh, Makoshika. <laughs> okay. Severable. All right. All right. Yeah. So, all right. So I got to make sure. Oh, uh, Sherry so. Lindgren, definitely add Makoshika on your trip planner. Absolutely. You will not be sorry. Again, I think, you know, Montana's known for, you know, Yellowstone and um, Glacier, Bay. Glacier Bay from on the west side of the state.
But on the east side, it's completely different. Completely it's like different. another planet. Yes. It's where the dinosaurs roam. So it's really cool. Really cool. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Yes, Dave, we'll be there. We'll have it with us. So come on by. <laughs> Five to seven tomorrow in Tampa. Five to six meet and greet. Six to seven. We're going to show you four clips from the first four episodes. So lots to show everybody tomorrow night in Tampa in our hometown at the Black Sheep American Pub in Lutz, right on US 41. All right, where are we going next? What time is it? I see uh, it's Brittany and Don ready to go. Okay, so who's heard of agates? Yeah, it's A-G-A-T-E, agates. Another part of the Montana show that when we met Riley and we were trying to find out, we were gonna go play Frisbee golf. And he said, you know what? Got something else you might want to try. And he said, agate hunting. And both Patrice and I had to go search it on our oh phones and go, is. what is an agate? So sure enough. Uh, we... <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be a bird. <laughs> I thought it was going to be shooting birds. Um, I don't have a problem with hunting. Um, I, I want it to be something that I'm able to cook and eat. And, you know, but um, So I had to go look it up. And it's not a bird. It's a rock. Um, and it's a, <laughs> again, where dinosaurs it's roam, rock. it's a rock. Um, it's where dinosaurs roam and these are dinosaur rocks, basically. Don't get too much I'm not, I'm going to let the <laughs> experts describe it. Um, certainly not me, but it was another <laughs> incredible day. Um, learning something new, doing something oh new gosh. right in the Yellowstone river, um, with local business. One of the things that you'll know about us is we always try to support local businesses. Um, we, I was raised in a small business home. My dad had his own business. His dad had his own business. We have our own business. We have independent contractors. We understand that. Um, love generational families. Love companies that have been around and employ, you know, people that stay. Uh, but meeting. A small company, a small business like Wide Open Lapidary. Um, you'll learn what lapidary means in a minute, too. These folks who took us agate hunting, um, that was that was a fun time, too. All right, so let's watch a clip. We're going to watch a clip from the second episode. This episode will air next Saturday, April 13th. It is from Glendive, Montana. And we're going to go ahead and just let this roll. We'll be right back with our next guest to talk about agates. Yeah. There he is. Hey. Hi, Don. Patrice. Don. I'm Kevin. Don. This place is beautiful, man. It is. Are you guys ready to go find some agates? I'm ready. Let's yeah. go. All right, let's go. We're down here looking for Montana agates on the Yellowstone River. It's one of the, the stretch from Mile City to the North Dakota border up past Sydney is about the best place you can find them. There we go. Oh, look at this look one. At hey, that. Kev. Your, your dendrites and your agate, your nice iron coloring. An agate was formed when there is a lot of volcanic activity. It's a quartz silica microcrystal that hardened and formed with iron in it. That's how we get our reds and our dendritic trees is from that iron solidifying inside of there when it's formed. All right, let's welcome Brittany and Don from Wide Open Labradary. What's going on, guys? How's it going? Hi. How you guys doing? Good. We're, we're hiding out in the store from the wind. Oh, yeah. I heard. I, yeah. Riley said it's it's windy out there. It's Does so... it warm up now in April? Does it start warming up? Yeah, it's pretty warm right now. I we've been hitting high sixties, low seventies. It got to seventy seven yesterday. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's okay. warm. Yeah. That's warm. Yeah, and you didn't have. I mean, you had snow not too long ago. Yeah, we, yeah. it was a pretty mild winter compared to normal so yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we couldn't have the boat out on the water looking for agates oh the last week of april I and mean, that's that's pretty rare yeah he's already yeah. had it out once. very yeah. cool i see you guys are in your new store um yeah you, so you've had a busy year beginning of the year too so um you did not have a storefront uh but now tell us where you are 
Uh, yeah, we didn't have a storefront. We were going to wait another year and then we got the opportunity to open up a store. And I mean, if you're going to do a small business, my philosophy is you go head first, both feet and go all the way or you don't do it at all. So we jumped into it and got a storefront right off of Main Street in Glendive, Montana. We've got yeah. our own little parking lot right off of Main Street. That's awesome. So when we did the episode with Don and Brittany, uh, Don met us at the Yellowstone River right there in Glendive. We headed down onto the beach. Actually, I brought my fishing rod, hoping I was going to catch a fish, but I was more interested in agate hunting. And so that whole segment, then Don took us back to his home, yeah. which was it was home studio at that point. We got to meet the whole family and got to see how they make jewelry. So it's Don and Brittany from Wide Open Lapidary. Tell us about some of your guys' jewelry. Can, can you show us some stuff? Yeah. yeah. She's been doing a lot of wire wrapping. We now have a friend of ours that does silversmithing, that does our custom silversmith setting. So we can nice. cut a stone, make a cabochon out of a Montana agate. And we have those for sale in the store so the person can buy them. And then they can decide if they want an earrings made out of them or a ring or a pendant. And we can work on a design with them and some sketches. And then we can send it off to our silversmith. Oh. Man. get a custom piece made for them and then we have wire wraps that Brittany has already done Let's see if i can get this show. Wow, very nice very cool Good stuff. i walked yeah. out of there with a beautiful necklace and a ring and i wear them wow, constantly nice, Brittany. i i love it because they're one of a kind and it's something that's natural that we found right there on the river and then you do a beautiful very job nice. of the wire wrapping and we so do tell us, tell us oh that Very one's nice. nice is that a ring yeah in that's here? a ring oh, out of 925 oh, silver oh. and a oh. necklace out of the same stone set yeah. that one aside <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, actually, I actually have the rock that i cut that out of and then i turned that into a specimen also oh, so know. i have the rock that i cut that from and jewelry made out of it so describe a little bit the process. So we found those agates with you. We put them in a bucket and we took them home with you. What do you do next? So after that, take through and we do a grading process. Um, it's a process called candling. We take a bright light and sit in a dark room and you look through the agates, shine the light in there. And you can kind of see that after you do it long enough, you learn the shadows and the pictures and you look for fracture lines in the rock of how you could cut it how what's suitable for jewelry what's suitable for tumbling um what's good garden material <laughs> that's what we call it garden <laughs> because whether you can cut them or not they're beautiful when you put them in a garden and it rains and then you can see all the colors on oh, the outside yeah. when they get wet it's beautiful we have a whole bunch for landscaping at our house that stuff that we won't turn into jewelry or specimens and then once we determine the ones that we want to cut in the jewelry, we put them in a bucket and lots of hours sitting on the saw. We have a big 16 inch slab saw, cut them, and then you get slabs. And then you find your pictures that you want to make and you circle out your design that you're going to cut out and make your cabochon and kind of go from there. And, the, and then it's hours and hours on a grinding wheel they're a 7.4 on the most hardness scale so you got to use diamond or silicon carbide everything to work on them wow i, wow. I, just, I love how I, I learned more words from hanging out I with Don, from, <laughs> from dendritic trees yes. to lapidary. lapidary what does lapidary mean it means the work with stone it's an art form you're a lapidary artist when you take stones or gems or se semi-precious stones or gems and turning them into jewelry carvings doing any kind of work while you're art altering the stone awesome and and Brittany, so once he's done with it and it's shiny and it's polished and it's got its shape does it just speak to you on whether or not it's going to be a ring, a ring or, or how you're because you were doing the tree of life wire wrap on mm -hmm. one of the pieces when we were there does it just speak to you um, sometimes, uh, otherwise it'll sit in my little bin and I'll look at it a couple times and then I'll put it back or I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it this time. And then I'll, I'll just start and I'll have something in mind and then it'll change as I go. Yeah. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day, really. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're not in Glendive, um, and somebody's interested in 
looking at some of the jewelry and wants to purchase, how, how can people get your stuff? Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, we were, we have a website too. Yeah. Um, it's www.shopwideopenlapidary.com. We have some stuff on there. Um, but our biggest thing that we do that we reach the most people across the U S is we have, um, TikTok Tuesday live sale at 6.30 and we have Facebook Friday live sales at 6.30 and we ship all over anything over $100 is free shipping in the U.S. So, that's so people can just tune in and, and you guys are showing rocks or showing jewelry yeah. and then so then they like, you know, they get send you a DM that I want number five or how does that work? It, it's they, live. They it, comment on the on the live and then we see the comment and then we'll be like, okay. And then we put it aside for them. And then at the end of the live, we send an invoice because we tell them the rules, you know, you send just your info before the end of the live and then we send you yeah. an invoice. And All you got to do is send us a private message with your e email and your shipping info. And then we send you an invoice. 30 minutes after the live ends, usually about 10 o'clock at night. And then you have 24 hours to pay and we send it through our Shopify store. So you can pay with any major credit card, your diner's club card, their shop app pay option for payment plans for large purchases, anything you can think of on there. Wow. Very cool. so, so social media and TikTok and Facebook has really changed your guys' hey, world. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. If you're like me and you're not super tech savvy, just follow them on Facebook. Yeah. And you, yeah. You know, they'll, yeah. Tell you and they'll take you through it all. Yeah. <laughs> and anytime we get a new product or do a new piece of jewelry or anything, we post it on all of our platforms that day. Wow. And then you can just send a message. Hey, how much is this? I want it or whatever. And we can do it that way too. You don't have to do live. You can just look through our page. I mean, you can go back as far as you want. And if there's something you see you want, if we don't have it anymore, we can get it. And we do all kinds of stones, gems, okay. crystals, specimens, everything from so all over unique. the world too. I, I love that it's so unique. Everywhere we go, um, reason number 745, <laughs> why I love Arvine, is the, the different jewelry or the different things that we get from the locate the location so i'm never going to find what i'm wearing in my ring yeah. and my necklace that i got from you guys no, no one else is going to have that nope. you know yep. and every time i wear it i think of my day in montana on the yellowstone river with you and meeting your family yeah. from the little guy who was <laughs> spider-man that day <laughs> yeah <Jackson. laughs> jackson. jackson yes we're talking to don laplant and Brittany from wide open lapidary they're in glendive montana uh, if you do go to Glendive, they've got a shop there in Main Street, which is brand new. Very so please cool. go in there and check out all their different agates. And you guys have got different things in agates, right? You've got all kinds of different rocks. Yeah, we have stuff literally from every continent on the planet. <laughs> all nice. over. That nice. is cool. I know uh, my cousin Lynette, who's on here, says be beautiful work. This is right up her alley. Absolutely. Too. She would love that stuff. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, we need to get a hold of you guys. Go on it. I guess is it wideopenlapidary.com? Is that is that it? Yeah. On there. Yeah, you can go to wide uh, it's shop shop wide open lapidary. Okay, shop wide open lapidary.com yep. to shop or, and then watch you on TikTok or watch you on Facebook Fridays, TikTok Tuesdays. Yep, and on Instagram, wide open lapidary on Facebook, Insta, or TikTok. That's fantastic. That's awesome. We had a blast, guys. We thank you so much. You'll be able to watch Don LaPlante Jr. on our Glen Dive episode, which airs April 13th on Discovery Channel, Saturday mornings at 8.30. You guys are great. Thank you Six, so much. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's 6.30, I think, out there. Right? Hey, will you guys yeah. go to Weibo? Do you want you want to go have some burgers on us? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, we you like going to Weibo. Time off? <laughs> yeah, we got to find time off first. Exactly. <laughs> Those are good uh, problems. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. And uh, I know you're going to be looking for some jewelry. Yeah, I like that one with the ring and the necklace that you just showed. <laughs> well, all right, be guys. Thank you so much for being with us. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. All right. Bye bye. Where's my mouse go? Hold on. Where'd my mouse go? Hello? <laughs> my mouse is gone. Oh, well, you might be sticking oh, around. No, oh, no. no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. What an evening it's been. We've had our three guests. We had 
You missed uh, Danielle Parton. What's that? Oh, I can kill yeah. that one. I can remove them. Uh, kick from studio. <laughs> all right. See ya. All right. So again, thank you all for watching us live tonight. It has been an incredible couple of weeks here. We have been gearing up for Saturday's airing of season three of RV There Yet. Uh, the travel show, which in, with an RV aspect, well, I think everybody that travels can enjoy the show. Everybody can. We are RVers. It's the way we've been traveling since 2004. I hate flying. Um, I love this country. We love this country. And RVing is the best way that we get to see it. I get to bring home moonshine, wine, freshest seafood. Uh, what else have we brought home? <laughs> All sorts of things. Jewelry. Um, it's just been a wonderful trip. This season is super, super fun. Very diverse. Um, from Montana Badlands to Cincinnati. Uh, from Nebraska to the Outer Banks. Tennessee. To Alabama. To Western Kentucky. To uh, It's a great season. A lot of smiles. A lot of laughs. A lot of, you know, like gasps of just amazing places that we've been to, whether it's Nebraska and Fort Robinson up on these buttes, whether it's at the bottom of a waterfall in Tennessee. Or a um, cave in yeah, Kentucky. A cave in yeah. Kentucky. Um, the cinematography this year is over the top. That's the great. music, the production is fantastic. We do it all. Please follow us on Facebook if you can. We apologize for not being on there tonight. We were supposed to be. But when we hit live stream, it said no to Facebook. So we're only on YouTube tonight. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, Patrice's favorite. Um, and we're going to leave you tonight with our last clip. It's a very special clip. Oh, um, yeah, forgot. Again, this uh, this guy we met. I'll Thank tell you, you this, McKinley. I'll tell you the story. Um, was that we were driving into Rock Island, Tennessee, and Patrice told us, Told me. Oh, I'm gonna pour that, it while you talk. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. I'm pour it while you talk. Red um, velvet moonshine. Sorry, I'll have red Daniel. velvet. Yeah. I'll have red velvet. Okay. Please, for me. Okay. Um, so as we were coming into Rock Island, Tennessee, Patrice tells me that she has got a musician to play for us for camp night, and I thought, oh, okay, you know, it's one of her friends that she knows from Nashville. I said, no, no big deal. So at seven o'clock, when the car pulls up and the person gets out, it happens to be. Uh, a singer songwriter by the name of Dave Fenley. Uh, Dave Fenley uh, was on The Voice, was on America's Got Talent. Um, his voice is absolutely amazing. Uh, this segment that I'm going to show you is part of the fifth episode. It will air in May sometime. Uh, before you go, Jennifer Founts, my husband and I don't have an RV. Okay. And I've never stayed in one, but love your show and has showed us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's probably one of the best compliments is yes. Uh, I love that you get inspired to go see these places. That's exactly what we want to do. You don't need an RV to go do them. And if you were there, if you tuned in earlier and we had Jessica from the Ridge, you can stay at an RV resort. They've got tiny houses and glamping. Oh, tents. yeah. It's not that's you I didn't feel like I was RVing, yeah, honestly. It you was don't so nice. need an RV to go enjoy these places. We love RVing. We love our Winnebago. Maybe someday you'll give it a try. But in the meantime, go have fun. Go have fun. Sorry. All right. <laughs> I, I've said everything. Tomorrow, I'm sorry, Saturday at 8 30. I'll say it one more time on Discovery Channel. Please tell all your friends. The bigger the ratings, the more chance we can go to an hour. We really want to go to an hour. A half an hour is just not enough time to, to tell the history yeah, and everything I talk that we a lot. really. <laughs> I talk too much. Uh, we're going to leave you with this very special segment. It happens to be a highlight of my career being able to film Camp Night. We're going to do it more. Uh, this was just the first. Um, and this is Dave Fenley. Oh. He's uh, and, and again, I think we should take our shot yeah. as we're saying. All right. Cheers, everyone who joined us. Thank you so right. much. Here's to season th three. Thank you, our crew. Thank you, Winnebago, Blue Ox, Campers Inn, everybody, Starbright. Uh, thank you so much. All right. Y'all take care. Have a good night. I had told you about someone coming to camp tonight to sing for us. You didn't tell me it was one of my favorite artists. This is going to be incredible. Your new EP? Yeah. The Spread Love Session. Volume 2. Yeah. It speaks to us. You know, whether it's Till You, 
we got this. We kind of took a left turn in our life about the same time that you got married and certainly yeah. began your career on the rise on The Voice. And so we'd love to hear the story behind Till you, you know, take that one and tell me, you know, what was it like, the writing process? In Nashville, like, our job as songwriters is mostly to write songs for other people to record. But this one never was that. Like, it was immediately, like, I felt selfish for writing a song that was so personal. It's been such a joy to, to see audiences embrace the song, even though it's not something they can necessarily relate to. I think they just feel how honest love can be. Yep. Can you play that first verse for us of sure, that song? Sure, absolutely. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> Till you walked in the room, I never saw an angel up close. Oh, my heart didn't know it was about to start falling. Till you said my name, I never heard it sound so sweet. Now I want to hear it on repeat. So Amy, keep calling. Oh, ain't it funny how life gets you where you going? Yeah, cause those three words used to come so easy. You weren't the first one to hear them, but it's the first time they felt true. And it may sound strange, and you may not believe me, but baby, I never really knew love till you. That's the one, man. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's the point of, good, of a song, right? I mean, it hits you in the heartbeat. It, that's what it's all about. <laughs> we got this. This one hits both of us because we took a left turn sure. in life. And we literally say this to each other all the time. Yeah. yeah. We got this. Can you play the hook on that? I'd love to yeah. hear the hook on that. Uh. We got this. We got this once in a lifetime thing. We got this, we got this love that ain't gonna change. If the storm winds blow and we just don't know when these hard times are gonna quit. As long as we got us, girl, we got this. That is so money, dude. Seriously. I think we all need to embrace that song. There are struggles, of course there are. Yeah. We all go through it, but if we can put it together, if we can just lean on each other, That's exactly you know, it. we got it. All along the way on this journey that we've been on, it's been the people we meet. And I'd love to hear a little bit of Getaway and if I could. And it's the songs that also. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's make a getaway down this highway. Hit the stay line by dawn. It's with me with the world in the rear view. Looking like a line from a penny song. We'll be free falling just like gypsies. Stray for that setting sun. I'll drive if you go with me. Come on, baby. Let's run. Yeah. Woo. Thank y'all so much for having me. Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> Thank That's you so, so much. Good. Truly. Thank y'all. It's been a pleasure. Wow. Uh, it gets me every time. Uh, I still am amazed that uh, that guy was at our camp. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We even have, he sang a song for us, Getaway, that, that same song at the end there uh, that you'll see in our finale. He sang the entire song for us. So we're going to create a compilation video at the end of the season with Getaway being kind of our theme song of uh, yeah. how we get away. Good stuff. This whole season's good. All Come right. Join us Saturday. 8.30 a.m. Discovery, Discovery Channel. One more time, you guys. Thank you so much. Here's to Severeville, <laughs> episode number one. Severeville, we are coming to you. I am out of uh, All right, out, I'm of, out of it. All right. Good night, y'all. Good night, you guys. Take care. Uh, I guess I have to just bail. <laughs> I don't even know how to just fade out. How do I just fade out? Leave studio. I know, but that'll just eject. How do I just show this? End stream. End stream. All uh, the way up at the top. I just wanted to show this. All right. So we're going to end the stream, guys. We had our shot. Now it's time for us to go to 99. All right? Good night.